Welcome back to the series, everyone. Today we have a special guest. It's Duke. This is my doggie. Say hi, Duke. Come here. That's him. Don't mind the loud breathing. That's that's all him. But welcome back to the series. Today we start phase two of our cultural mapping. So. I'm gonna be showing you all of the places that we were assigned to. So before we started our second phase, we had a little meeting to just go over what we were gonna be um, doing in this phase. It was honestly very exciting because we hadn't seen each other in months. You know, it brought up a lot of excitement because we knew what was coming. It was gonna be another um, adventurous time with our friends. No! Back up, no! You're not allowed in the front seat. <laughs> and in this phase, there's a lot more of us, which comes in handy because we were assigned to a lot more locations than last time. Um, last time we only had those three main and popular sites, which were Atabay Peak, Marmo Cliff, and Tuburan Coffee Farm. Now, this time, we have the rest of the 54 barangays in Tuburan to explore, which are divided equally into these three groups. And while the last destinations were very known to the locals and it being popular, now in phase two, we are off to seek new locations, new sites that could possibly have that, um, you know, potential to be a tourist spot. And this means we really had to literally get down and dirty. Also, I do have a disclaimer for this video, which is last time our destinations were very well known to the public and to the locals. Um, they were also very popular, so they had been, they have existing trails that people have made for people to not, you know, get lost and all of that. Um, these destinations that we're gonna be. These destinations that we're going to be exploring in this video, they are not currently open to the public because there are a lot of, you know, um, safety things that needs to be worked out. And we were also escorted by um, barangay officials who knew the land well and people who worked in the municipality such as Ati Emilia and Ati Tin. Plus, we really discourage you guys from entering these places, especially the caves, not only for your safety, but also to preserve its natural beauty. Officials haven't fully made this th these places safe for um, people to come visit it. You know, we just want to protect it so that it can get to the point where everyone will be able to visit it in the future. I'm sorry, Duke isn't as calm as Duchess. Duchess just sleeps in the passenger seat, but Duke... <laughs> Hi! We went to a lot of barangays and not all of them had potential tourist sites which is why I'll only be showing you guys the highlights of our whole phase 2 exploration because there were only a few sites that really um, I'd say amazed us Just be quiet! but. Either way, all the other sites that aren't, aren't featured, we had a lot of fun going to and just had a fun time being with each other and and seeing different parts of our town. Are you okay? Are you okay? So, you tell them, Dookie. Tell them, let's get to it. I hope you guys enjoy. Mm -hmm. 
This place was honestly so pretty to look at. Um, when we arrived, it just had this whole enchanted feeling to it. With all of its waterfalls and water pools, it seemed like something straight out of a fairy tale book. Riding on the back of the motorcycle was the majority of what our transportation was like for all of phase two, but I honestly did not mind it whatsoever because it was so fun. Every week was a whole different terrain from the last, and even if it was scary, I just thought of it as one big roller coaster that you might potentially fall off from. But it was great, it was great. So this hike was one of the most agonizing ones that we had experienced in all of our tourism. Mostly because the ground underneath your feet would just slide right off the mountain and you would go along with it. And which we did multiple times. Guys, not in my dog up today. And it's gonna be at the sheet. <laughs> but he has a bar go the sheet. He comes to get cool. I want to see Ethan. Like, look oh, how no. steep she, this I is. You could just fall and keep falling till you hit the very bottom. Hey guys, we have this cool slide here in Barangay. So as you can Barangay. see here, oh, some didn't. parts of our no. path were just not able to be walked on. <laughs> so you had to slide down it. I wouldn't be able to tell you how many times and how many people fell this day before we even arrived to our destination. All I have to say is I broke my sunglasses by landing on them and someone legitimately fell off the side of the mountain. Sometimes this is exactly how we have to eat our lunch. We just have to find some place to sit and eat up. And we always made sure to bring our trash. Also, during the whole time, we put our full trust into our guides and our drivers because Lord help them, there's no path, there's no roads, just trust. When you first step into the cave, you're kind of overwhelmed by this feeling of being scared, but at the same time also this feeling of excitement because you have no idea what beauty lies ahead. Around one third of the way in, we realized it had rained a few days beforehand, and so it was very muddy inside there. We ended up having to take off our shoes and walk in barefoot, which I do not recommend. I do not recommend. I just don't do it. At the very end of the cave is where we got just shocked of how incredible it was inside. It was some sort of winter wonderland or a version of Elsa's castle. Now before you enter any sort of cave, you should always educate yourself first on the do's and don'ts of when you're inside. Such as, you should never touch the stalagmites or stalactites, which are these columns drooping from the ceiling and coming from the ground with your bare hands. 